This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Three years later. What? Time skip. Okay. The muted murmur of a television echoes through the spacious room. Why are we getting the flashback style of text? There's no other sound to be heard. Hmm. Half submerged in a plush sofa, I abruptly open my eyes at the sound of a voice on the television. Wait, do we get the house still? We haven't been in the mansion? Dane. It's a very familiar voice, one I've been hearing on a daily basis for a long time now. Ah, I must have nodded off halfway through. I move my eyes open to the enormous LCD screen mounted on the wall. Yumiko, wearing a tailored professional suit and absolute expre <laughs> an abs a resolute expression, listens carefully to her interviewer's question and offers precise response. That was a pretty nostalgic dream just now. Maybe it's because I spoke of Amine on the phone the other day, but I dreamed of our time at Mahama Academy. I find my mind running back over the events that turned Yumiko into the public figure she is today. When Sakaki Michiaki transferred all of his stock into the East Beach group to her, Yumiko fought long and hard about what to do with it all. She even considered selling the entire stake and donating the proceeds to charity. It was, in some sense, tainted money. And more importantly, slightly less than 10% of that company still amounted to an astronomical sum of money. Yumiko wanted to live a peaceful life on her own terms. And she knew that kind of money would change everything. But after much agonizing, she ultimately decided to accept it. And then, while using her newfound wealth to attend a top-flight university, she started up her own company, one that's been proven wildly successful. Right now, it's becoming increasingly frequent for her to appear in the media as an exemplary young entrepreneur. Nice! That's awesome! You go, Yumiko! As to why Yumiko voluntarily entered the same corporate world that tied her down for so long, I've never asked her point blank. But I do have the feeling it's got something to do with the open wounds she's been ignoring for the last three years. Probably the same reason she didn't sell off this house. Despite all the bad memories it must hold for her, we're living here together now. I guess there comes a point when avoidance doesn't make your scars ache any less. My other cell phone begins to ring for the first time in three years. After carefully confirming the name on the caller ID screen, I hit the answer button. Hey, been a while. Are we still working for Jan? There's a moment of silence, but in that time many unspoken words pass between us. Although I was officially reprimanded after the incident three years ago, a certain influential force in Ichigaya's upper echelons shielded me from more serious charges and arranged for my reinstatement on the reserve. That said, I was no longer interested in returning to my previous workplace, as supporting Yumiko had become my first and foremost priority. I took my chance to formally resign. Naturally, this led to an estrangement from JB. There was one and only one thing I'd ask of her at the end. It was a job better suited to a detective agency than a professional of her caliber, but I asked anyway, fully aware of my selfishness. JB accepted that strange request without particular comment. I didn't ask why, but it felt as though she wanted to tie up that same loose end herself. I already knew the reason she was making this phone call. It has to mean she's found some sort of answer to that odd request I made of her. There's no longer any other reason for JB to contact me. I see. Thank you, Julia. It's alright. I still want to know. I mechanically jot down JB's indifferent words in a notepad that was lying nearby. At the trees out as the trees outside sway in the wind, a muted sound of rustling foliage carries through the otherwise silent room. After ending the call of JB, I tuck the black cell phone away and take out the one I normally use. The call history is almost entirely filled with a single number. Clicking on it, I bring the phone to my ear. Oh, we're back to a certain place. I love a certain place. In fact, it's never. Yumiko and I walk leisurely down the road leading to the station. She's got a lot on her plate at work right now, but the moment I called, she managed to open her schedule. Yeah, there's something I wanted to talk about. Sorry about dragging you out here. I think a certain place is just what they use for when they don't want to disclose the location. It could mean pretty much any place. Yumiko smiles happily. I haven't told her the real reason for this outing yet. That was a deliberate decision. I didn't want it to be weighing on her mind from the very start. Hmm. It's a slightly far off place, actually. True, now that you mention it. Yumiko glances over at me with a puzzled expression. This vague, riddle-like conversation continues as we climb our stairs to our local train station. 
Changing trains after a few stops, we make our way out of the central Tokyo and head to the south part of the Kanto region. Yes, we're going back to Pokemon! <laughs> The Kanto region. Colorful port cities flash by outside the windows. Eventually, these give way to peaceful little valley towns. Yeehaw. As vivid shades of green start to dominate the scenery, Yumiko grows progressively quieter. The train's heading straight for that place. We wouldn't be going there without a good reason. Yumiko's no doubt starting to realize that this won't be the light-hearted outing she'd expected. Our destination lies in the town where Yumiko spent the loneliest years of her childhood. By the time we're standing before the building itself, her expression's painfully tense. Oh. We're visiting her mom. It's a large general hospital at the outskirts of a sleepy country town. A hospital the two of us visited several times together. But there should no longer be any reason for us to come here. Oh, we're not visiting her mom. Yumiko's mother, Sakaki Misako, quietly passed away two years ago. Oh no! After the usual formalities with her relatives, Yumiko told me she'd never be setting foot in this town again. There were too many sad memories in this place. Just being here was painful for her. I know it's hard coming back here, but there's something we can't talk about anywhere else. Yes. We proceed slowly through the familiar hallways. After climbing the stairs, we make our way toward a private room in the very back, then come to a halt in front of the door. There's a certain person who's been visiting this place virtually every week since your mother's death. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yumiko casts her eyes down, pursing her lips slightly. Looks as though a name's come to mind. I don't know why any more than you do, but it's a fact. That person's been coming here for years, and begging the hospital staff not to breathe a word of those visits to anyone. I silently nod. I know it'd be tough for you to meet him face to face all of a sudden, Yumiko. I'm planning to go in there and ask why he's doing this. Do you think you could wait outside and listen? We can head back home now if that's what you want. I'll promise never to bring that person up again. But if there's still a bad taste lingering in your mouth, instead of trying to forget the past, how about we look away to for, look for a way to accept it? Her eyes still turned down toward the floor. Yumiko mutters quietly. Yeah. Sorry for not saying anything until now. There must be countless memories running through Yumiko's head right now. Her empty childhood, the faint hope that she found, only to have it snatched away. The man who took everything away, her crushing solitude, the artificial cage where her heart slowly began to thaw. Her first act of real resistance, our escape. At the end of a long struggle, a confrontation with everything on the line. And the former usurper who had everything taken away from him. What does his daughter feel for him now? Hatred? Something else entirely? I can practically see the tangled ball of conflicted emotions wriggling inside of her mind. Evidently, and eventually, Yumiko raises her head. Her expression's firm and determined. I see. All right, then. Nodding to Yumiko, I step forward and slowly open the door to the hospital room. With the heavy sound of wood sliding across the floor, sunshine from the far window floods out into the hallway. I'm coming in. It's a hospital room with no occupant, dominated by an empty bed. The strong smell of the sun-faded old curtains overpowers the lingering scent of the disinfected still lingering in the air. At the side of the bed, a single man sitting in a folding chair, hands folded in front of him. Well, I'm not in that line of work anymore. But time passes quickly. Best to use it efficiently, wouldn't you say? Sakaki Michiaki smiles stiffly as the words leave his mouth. His face, carved with wrinkles, looks like that of a much older man. He's the same sprites! Oh, 
He's still in that fine suit, too. I remember yours very clearly. Seems to have changed pretty dramatically. Well, you gotta find a new purpose. A positive one. His eyes, once gleaming with ravenous ambition, are dull and sunken. His eyes are closed. His mouth droops slightly. He's smiling! It's as if his face can no longer support its own weight. He looks fine to me! <laughs> There's not even a hint of power and intensity that once defined this man. The last three years must have been a period of increasingly rapid decline. Sorrow seems to ooze from every pore of his body. He, he's smiling cheerfully. Now he's not. Michiaki's voice, full of self-ridicule, implies a question. Here to laugh at a fallen man. I wanted to ask you something. What was driving you three years ago? No. What drove you for your entire adult life? Where did that ambition and greed come from? Are we going to get his backstory? I couldn't help feeling that you were lost somehow. That you might have even regretted the path you took. And that's why I've dragged you out here. So I can stick my nose into your business. Michiaki responds to this with a snort of amusement. <laughs> This this stream was definitely had a lot of computer crashes. I'm not sure if this has the record for the most in a single stream, because usually after I have three crashes, I'm like, well, that's it. I guess I'm done for the day. But I'm clearly at the end of this route, so I'm, I'm sticking it out, because I'm not doing, like, a half-hour stream next week. Actually, I'm not doing any stream next week. <laughs> Tell me then, why have you been retracing the footsteps of your wife and child? I had my superior do a little digging. You've been sighted in the vicinity of this hospital. The apartments Yumiko and I rented while we were on the run, and even your wife's family home. My final request of JB was an investigation into Sakaki Michiaki's current whereabouts and activities since his fall from power. Michiaki spent the last few years visiting every single place his wife and daughter once lived, as if to vicariously experience their journey. And he did his best to keep us in the dark about it, even disguising himself and using false names. He still refused to take off the suit, though. Only a person who regrets their past would do something like that. If you'd really thrown everything aside, you wouldn't go out of your way to visit places with a connection to your family. That's why I finally decided to ask, was that life really what you wanted? Or were you just chained to it by something beyond your control? Had a feeling knowing the answer might be better than letting it all fade away miserably into the past. Michiaki heaves a heavy sigh. His sunken eyes gaze at the floor for a long moment before slowly turning up to me. There's a surprisingly gentle smile on his face. It's the resigned expression of a beaten man. <laughs> Blame me for this one. I'm the one who asked her. He is weird. Michiaki, who had been leaning forward in his chair like a stooped old man, abruptly reclines as if to stretch his back. His face pointed at the ceiling, he lets out a very long sigh. I'm gonna guess you were three years old. No? Okay. Not as bad, but still too early. I guess it's never too, really too early to learn about the world, but if you're like, yeah, well, we'll see where this goes. Throughout Michiaki's childhood, there was a constantly ri rotating cast of women at his father Kojiru's side. Is his dad the blue chicken from Ocarina of Time? The women came and went one after the other, each calling herself his mother, offering him various forms of distorted love. Some were affectionate to him in the shallow way of a child playing with his favorite toy. Others were openly hostile, even abusive. But however they treated him, his father showed no interest whatsoever. Oh, this is sad. On the other hand, Sakaki Kojiru was abnormally intrusive when it came to his son's studies and friendships. 
Perhaps it was because he had once failed the Tokyo Imperial University examination himself, but he demanded superlative academic results from Michiaki, insisting he would tolerate nothing less than admission to a renowned national university. Any friends his son made at school were thoroughly investigated by detective agencies. Dane, bro! Helicopter parent much? When Michiaki failed to produce superb results or showed even the slightest signs of disobedience, his father would respond with violence. Yikes! I guess this explains how he became the person he was. Again, does not excuse what he did, but it explains it. Desperate to escape his terror, Michiaki threw himself into his studies, ultimately passing the entrance exam for the nation's most prestigious university. This success expanded to his personal life as he obediently acquainted himself with the gaudiest tiers of high society. The more Michiaki met his expectations, the more his father came to demand from him. <sighs> Michiaki's voice trembles slightly, as if afraid even to revisit the memory of his father. It takes some time before his, the next words emerge from his mouth. He was very upfront about that, apparently. University didn't bring the freedom Michiaki had hoped for. Every step he took was decided by his father. Under constant observation- You've gotta be kidding me! OBS disconnected again? Are you kidding me? It's a visual novel! What are you doing, computer? This is not hard to run. It's text and images. It's, we're not even animating it. It's still images that change very infrequently. It's so easy to render. Why are you crashing all this time? Why are you overheating from this? This is ridiculous. Okay. So. Yeah, my the, the longer I stream, the more OB... The, again, not OBS crashing, the more my computer cuts out the internet for overheating or some other reason. So here's how it's going to happen. I am finishing this route, this stream... If my PC crashes again, or like if OBS cuts connection to the stream again, sorry folks, but I'm still continuing with it. You can see it in the YouTube VOD, but I can't keep... <laughs> I can't keep doing this. So, I apologize for this. I wish I could fix it. I don't know how we can fix it. But, here we go. Hopefully, it won't crash anymore. He lived as nothing more than an extension of another man's will. Sushi. Wow. Michiaki turns his eyes toward the window. <laughs> right down to the $3,000 suit! Come on! That's why you followed in her footsteps after losing everything? If you had another bitter smile, Michiaki nods, slowly nods. Did you find anything? He shakes his head. ただ何より恐ろしかったのは that takes, it takes guts to admit that, <laughs> that it didn't make you sad. Yeah, so this guy definitely had a messed up childhood and life. Still doesn't excuse him trying to do the same thing to his daughter, though. Or the way he treated his wife. Once again, Michiaki's gaze turns toward the ceiling. He's not shedding tears, but he's wearing the expression of a crying man. 
The expression of a man painstakingly forcing his face to take on the contours of sorrow. When you've known right, it's easy enough to see wrong for what it is. But when all you've known is violence and cruelty and misery, they're simply facts of your existence. By looking at the situation outside, you can understand that you've fallen to the very bottom. And yet the grief and remorse just won't come. There's no emptier feeling. Skaki Michiaki is mired in the depths of an extraordinary despair. No matter how he moves, no matter what he says, the smothering darkness all around doesn't so much as stir. He's sunk into an inescapable hell. It's the polar opposite of his daughter's suffering, where Yumiko felt pain. This man knows only crushing numbness. I don't know why my PC's crashing to this extent. I, I truly don't. Again, it's a visual novel. It really... It, it really shouldn't be that hard to render it and stream it, but apparently it is. Might be hard to swallow coming from a brat like me, but I can sort of understand your feelings. There was a time when I couldn't even grieve for the things I'd lost. I tell Sakaki Michiaki just a little about my own past. About my misery and my one small glimmer of hope. About the emptiness I felt when even that was snatched away from me. About the despair I endured again and again until my heart grew numb. I, until I couldn't even recognize it as despair. <laughs> you, that's it, Proxima. That's exactly what's happened. <laughs> this is his revenge. He's like, you foil me in the game, I foil your ability to stream it. <laughs> you can make me you can make me a fool, but you can't announce it to the world. <laughs> Wouldn't say I've completely recovered even now, but little by little I've started to experience those feelings again. Do you know why? It's because of Yumiko. Having her in my life helped me regain something like normal human emotions. By protecting another human being, by sharing my life with them, I gained something in return. The impenetrable darkness inside me was punctured with a few small rays of light. But if I hadn't met Yumiko, there's no doubt I'd still be wallowing in the same despair as this man. I need to be on my way, but tell me something first. What are you planning to do from now on? Alright. In that case, I'm going to make a request of you. Do whatever you want with the time you've got left, but don't give up on living. Staring straight into Michiaki's eyes, or lack thereof, because he always has them closed, I continue in a forceful tone of voice. Don't take anything else away from Yumiko. Whatever you think of yourself, she still sees you as her father. Goodbye. Those final words seem to have an effect on Michiaki. I've already turned my back and taken a few steps when I hear him rising to his feet. Yumiko... When I turn around, Michiaki's looking at me with the expression of a man who's just reached a firm conclusion. Hmm. This isn't the hollow husk of a man I was speaking to a moment ago. He's not a broken puppet that he told me when he who told me he was nothing. At the end, Sakaki Michiaki stands before me as a father. Don't think I can accept that request. <laughs> no, my dad! Because someday, you'll have to help make Yumiko happy as well. But when I speak those words, the light fades from his eyes, and because he closes them. <laughs> And Yumiko's a woman who can grieve for a puppet. Weren't you listening? She dragged me up out of the same muck you're sinking in. Yes. I wouldn't even be standing in this room otherwise. Yumiko's lingering unhappiness wasn't a product of bitterness, much less a desire for revenge. It was something else entirely. And that's why I came here. 
to show them a path toward accepting the past. That's not going to be your final request. I'll come see you again. Make sure you stick around until then. Turning around once more, I head for the door. This time, there's no call from behind. Yumiko? Yumiko's not standing in the hallway where I left her. But it doesn't take long for me to realize where she's gone. Oh, no, that's fine. Don't don't worry about it, Simpsons R Us. I, I get that you could have taken that multiple ways, but I just... I didn't feel like there was a way of answering that question without it turning into something political. So it's fine. You are forgiven. There's absolutely no hard feelings. And I realize that I also... I don't think I've included that in my Twitch chat rules. Maybe I'll add that. I don't know. I don't like having too many rules. Whoever's nice today, she has to be there. On to roof. A powerful wind gusts across the rooftop. Sandwiched between the vivid blue sky and the dull gray concrete, a small white fane flutters in the breeze. That's descriptive. A slender milepost marking the spot where it all began and the spot where it's going to end. Her white skirt and long black hair dance in the air as I slowly approach. Aww! Okay. Well, if that's not a final CG, then I don't know what is. Wrapping my arms around that slim body from behind, I embrace it tightly. Yumiko must have realized I was approaching. Without flinching or turning around, she reaches up to grasp at my hand. Shoulders trembling softly, she lets her tears spill freely down onto my arm. Affectionately stroking my hand, Yumiko thanks me again and again. The wind gusts strongly past us, but we accept it head-on, steady as a deeply rooted tree. The tree of Grisea? Ooh. Yeah, shoot. Are we actually going a reconciliation route? She chokes up repeatedly as the words leave her mouth, and yet her voice seems strong and firm. It's going to take a while, you know. Skaki Michiaki has many, many empty years behind him. Filling that massive void won't be a small project, or an easy one. Thank you. Her hand squeezes fiercely down on mine. I nod and squeeze back. The words I spoke to Michiaki were my honest feelings. It's only because of Yumiko that I'm here today. I owe her everything. Alright. Let's teach him together. With that, Yumiko falls silent once more. Grasping my hand, she gazes up at the sky and lets the wind break against her body. Beautiful summer clouds drift by far overhead. The sky Yumiko watched before was always a lonely place. The vault of blue was a symbol of nothingness, a reflection of the emptiness below. But right now, I think she were, I think she's seen something very different up there. This is a long epilogue. Oh, this lady again. And the spy music. Oh. Huh. <laughs> this girl Chiara, or Chiara, however you pronounce it, has literally been in two scenes. And in one of the scenes, she had like two lines. How is she already an interesting character? She has an interesting design, I guess, but I don't know. She seems very nondescript to me. Oh, 
現在は娘の榊由美子の支援により回復傾向にあるとのことです以前のような暴挙には至らないと見て間違いないでしょう Again, seeing that pronunciation doesn't answer if it's Chiara or Kiara. <laughs> I mean, it's true, Jamie. In the anime, it's spelled Kiara. Okay. That, I mean, that sounds better. And I'm pretty sure Chiara would not be the Japanese way of pronouncing it. Wow! Did they assassinate this dear guy? Sometimes I feel like they're the real villains. I wish it was Colonel Mustard instead. あの人質部隊の so basically, the real mastermind is still out there. Mm, we got a kid. Oh, yeah, it is. Kiara. Okay, she must play a bigger role in some of the other routes because they're giving her her own sprites and a, quite, quite a few of them. It's a girl. Five years later. So this is eight years after the main story. Riverbank. Pulling along, pulled along by a small hand, I walked down a gently curving road at the side of a familiar river. I have to bend over a little to match the height of my companion. Moving at an awkward trot, I do my best to keep up. Oh, is this our kid? Yuma. Maybe you could slow down instead, Yuma. My entreaty, delivered <laughs> with a lopsided half-smile, is shot down instantly. <laughs> yes, it's almost like this game might be unrealistic a little bit. As Yuma hauls me forward with renewed vigor, I hear a quiet giggle from behind us. Look, Yumiko, can you stop laughing and say something to the kid? Ignoring this request entirely, Yumiko smiles over at us. One of her hands is occupied with a picnic basket, the other with a bag full of painting materials. Oh, we're gonna paint as a family! She watches her husband and only daughter run noisily alone with an expression of profound contentment on her face. So we had a son in the bad ending and a daughter in the good ending? Interesting. I feel bad for the son who never exists in this timeline. With practice movements, Yuma brushes away a little dirt and then guides us to our seats on the grass. The instant Yumiko settled herself onto the ground, Yuma slips in between her legs and onto her lap. Why don't you sit with me every once in a while, Yuma? That is not going to happen. Don't tell people that. I'm not streaming Amine or Makina's roots. Kicking her stubby legs in the air, Yuma turns her face away in rejection. Yumiko, of course, just watches and laughs. Typical. Looking back at her mother, Yuma makes her usual demand. Yumiko nods and retrieves a sketchbook from her bag. Aww! That's so cute! Oh wait, maybe maybe we have to use this as the final thumbnail instead, actually. Oh, that's freaking adorable. I know you're joking, but not necessarily everyone in Twitch chat knows you're joking, so I set the record straight. 
Okay, that's freaking adorable. <laughs> so cute! <laughs> nice, happy family. Coming here has become a part of our normal routine. It's always the three of us. Yumiko, me, and our only child. Pretty much every weekend, we're here performing a happy family... <laughs> a happy family number sweet enough that it'd likely nauseate any unfortunate observers. <laughs> Yumiko reaches down and makes Yuma shift the, uh, the marker in her hand to a more normal grip. Last week, the budding artist in question ended up defacing one of her favorite blouses as a result of that sloppy marker technique. <laughs> With this energetic response, Yuma immediately switches back to her bizarre initial grip. <laughs> Smiling wryly, Yumiko takes her daughter's small hand in hers and shifts the marker again. Hard to believe it's the same hand that once came flying at my face in unthinking rejection. <laughs> so, Dad, how did you and Mom meet? Well, she tried to kill me with a box cutter! <laughs> what? <laughs> Sounds like all the tests were good. I'm glad. Ooh! Yumiko nods brightly. Just the other day, the doctor in charge of Michiaki's case granted approval for a discharge from the hospital. Yumiko's years of steady, determined effort have finally been rewarded. Ah, Yeah. Good thing we had you around, Yuma. In response to this innocent question, I just stroke her head. Yuma's cheerfulness provided more than enough warmth to thaw Michiaki's heart. These days, he's smiling like a good-natured old man every time his granddaughter walks into the room. Aw, that's... that's nice. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Yuma, losing interest in the conversation, scribbles passionately away at her sketchbook. Gripping the marker firmly in her fist, she piles vaguely circular shapes onto each other, seemingly at random. You can joke around! I'm All I was doing was setting the record straight so nobody thinks that I'm going to stream Amine's route. It's not happening. Looking up at me, she grins from ear to ear and points at the sketchbook. Also, it, it's because you deliver this in text form, it is difficult to know if you are joking or if you are being serious. That's just the nature of text chat. Papa. A mismatch of shapes that might barely qualify as something like a face stares up at me from the sheet of paper. Sorry, Yumiko. Seems Yuma might have taken after me instead of you on this front. Unable to find appropriate words of praise, I let out a fatherly sigh. <laughs> We've got to do something about her sense of aesthetics, at least. As I heave another lone sigh, my wife and daughter cackle at me. Cackle is not a good word. <laughs> if you're like, someone was cackling, that's like a bad laugh. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, if you, if you put it like that, obviously I know that's a joke, because that's impossible. <laughs> Look, it's just, it's just the inevitable issue of text chat. Sarcasm can't really be conveyed. Uh, and when her laughter dies down, Yumiko mumbles a few words to herself. Stroking Yuma's head gently, she continues with free, earnest words. Ooh, if... I, I guess a good way, if you really want to be sure people know it's a joke, you can put, like, JK at the end for just kidding. That That's an effective way. Once, there was only emptiness inside her. Yumiko rejected everything, avoided all communication, cut off the lines trying, tying her to the world. Eventually, the passage of time softened her. Slowly, almost, all against, almost against her will, she began to form new connections. But at first, those bonds inspired only denial and guilt. Today, she's full to the brim with heartfelt gratitude. It flows out of her as naturally as she breathes. Every thank you is nothing less than proof that Yumiko's embraced this world with open arms, that she's actively chosen to live in it. That's my line. Thank you, Yumiko. After a long and painstaking search, we found happiness. Of course, it's a fragile thing, with no constant form. We still have our struggles and our doubts. But it's not just the two of us anymore. There's something else for us to protect. Someone else to protect us both. The future we couldn't begin to imagine is slowly revealing its shape. <laughs> the warm, late spring wind jo blows gently by us. As the leaves rustle softly in the distance, Yuma's musical voice flies off toward the ocean. And in the sky we've drawn together, there's not a single speck of cloud. Yaaah!
New root, new music. Oh, it's one of those, it's one of those credit sequences where it's, it, it knows that I'm streaming it and it's blacked it out. It's even black on my game's end, because apparently it's copywritten. They don't take out the copyright song, they just take out the credits. What? This is rid I forgot that this happens. Dang, this game is so smart. It knows that I'm recording it and streaming it. They're like, nope, that's not allowed, and they black it out. Wow. This is a good song, though. All right, well, Yumiko's Route was definitely my favorite out of the three that I played. Like, way less cringy than the other two routes. I really like the story. And, yeah, it, it was good. They had, a, they had probably my favorite writing was in this route, and it had a lot of sweet moments. Yeah, definitely my favorite of the routes. I also like... This was the only route where it actually shows us in the future with, like, we're married to the girl and we have kids, uh, a child. I like that. I like getting that future glimpse at the future. I like the CGs. The bad ending... Like, the bad ending was honestly still pretty good. So, yeah, I definitely like this route a lot. It also felt shorter than the other ones. <laughs> it is a cool credit scene. Well, <laughs> shoot, we don't... None of us get to see it. It's not even a case of I'm seeing it, but it's not showing up on OBS. No, it's blacked out for me as well. <laughs> Which is crazy. They really don't want you to know who made this game. That's the... <laughs> that's the real... <laughs> that's the real thing. They actually just didn't put in credits. They're like, we don't want anyone to know who made this, this travesty. <laughs> I know I rag on the game a lot. This route was a lot better than the others. There are far fewer moments that I'm just like, nope, nope. Actually, I don't think the last two streams had a single moment where I had to sip my water really loudly because it was cringy. Well, yeah, so that's Fruit of Grisea, I guess, at least all that we're going to see. <laughs> I guess if somebody else really wants to see the Machina and Amine roots, there are other people who have played it, so you can look those up. I will not be, uh, <laughs> I will not be playing either of those roots, and I don't anticipate that changing in the future. So, for all, at the end of the day, this is it for Grisea, as far as I'm concerned. That uh, that did not last as long as I thought. I expected we would need another one or two streams after this, but hey, I'm happy. Again, that was a satisfying end to the route. Very nice. I like the character development as well. Really my only complaint... Well, not my only complaint, but I think my main complaint would be just the fact that Yumiko changes so drastically from the murder girl we are introduced to to what she is at the end. And some of it was actually genuine, and I'm like, yep, I can see how she transitions that, and some of it was just like, man, she really was into murder early on without much explanation. Isn't this game part of the summer Steam sale? I'm not sure! I think I got it originally on the summer Steam sale many years back, but I forgot about the Steam sales. I'd have to take a look. <laughs> yeah, I have very much a love-hate relationship with this game. <laughs> it's 60% off the sale right now. That That's a good deal. Well, that was a nice song. Nobody gets to know who made the game, though. Sorry. That's just how it be. <laughs> Configuration. Oh, uh, no, hang on. That was the wrong area. Extras. CG gallery. Scene replay. Secret? System voice download. Wallpaper and icon download. Uh, no thanks. That's, that's interesting, though. Movie gallery? Oh, yeah, there was the opening movie. Oh, we can see the credit scenes. But, uh, apparently, we can't see... We get, Two of them are still locked. Because we... Machina's Root and Omni's Root. That's interesting. We can't actually see them. It, it showed this opening movie. It just didn't show any of the other ones, which is... Uh, huh, that's interesting. Music gallery. Oh, wow! It actually does have all of the... Musics here. Oh, that's really cool. I actually am familiar with the soundtrack, because I've, I've listened to it. I have some of the songs here, actually, on my uh, randomizer playlist, such as, uh... 
Where is it? Oh, I rock you. I think, yeah, I think this one's here. I think Code XX is here as well. That's the spy music. Deadlock. That's the great one. Um, I don't think... Oh, Grape Drops is also really good. That's one of the more sad ones, though. Yeah, the Grisea soundtrack is great. There are two mystery ones. I believe these are the songs that play at the end of Amine and Makina's Roots. So I don't have those. Probably won't ever get them. Scene replay, what is this? Is it? Does it have all the scenes divided? Oh my gosh, it does! Idiot girl fake Sundere. So this is just the common route. There are five pages in the common route. Then we got the Yumiko route. Just two two pages of that. The Michiru route has free. Yeah, that one is longer. Sachi route also has free. Yep. I, I assume... Pff, yep. You don't get to see anything here because you haven't played either of them. Amine has two... P Wait, Makina only has one page? Is Amine... Or Makina's... Is, does Makina's... Is Makina's route really short? That would be interesting. CG gallery. I love all the CGs here. It was great. Oh, and these are all the little comic books as well. Oh, I hate that CG. Oh yeah, I forgot about the little drawing at the end. <laughs> That's not Michiru. Oh, she's got quite a few CGs. Oh, that's right. Should not have clicked that, because that briefly showed the really lewd CG that I don't know how it got in. Alright, interesting. How do I configure the voices, though? Oh, I think I go to sound. That's right. Wait, you can have the cat for the menu? I don't remember that option being available. Okay, so I love it. It's like, you can have any of the five main girls uh, voice the menu music. You can also have JB, which like, I guess, and Principal, and the cat? What the heck? You can have the cat? I'm going to make it the... I'm going to set the, the voices to the cat. So that way, if I ever, for some stupid reason, I'm like, I should play this again, I'll be greeted by the cat being like, Nyah! and I'm like, oh, never mind. No, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, so that's it for Fruit of Grisea. We have finished everything that I want to in this game, which means next time we stream a visual novel, it will almost certainly be the Clannad side stories, which I'm looking forward to much, much more. Yeah! Yes, so a friendly reminder, we will not have a stream this Monday. It is 4th of July here in the USA, Independence Day, so I will be taking that day off, being with family. I will be streaming Wednesday. It will not be Hollow Knight. It will be something else. I have already decided. It will be a surprise. And then after Wednesday, I will be on vacation, and I will not be coming back until the 14th, so no streams and possibly no uploads during that time. And then when I come back, we'll probably do a one-off stream for weekend and then continue with Hollow Knight after that. So, <laughs> no, sorry, Proxima. Fourth of July only exists in the USA. In, in Britain, they go from July 3rd to July 5th. That's just how it goes. <laughs> That's actually kind of true. To, yeah, Michiru and Yumiko did have pretty similar backstories and, yeah, went in the polar opposite directions, so that's interesting. All right, everybody. That was a long stream, but that was a good stream. I now need to make dinner and get ready for the rest of the day. So, thank you all for joining in. It was great chatting with you all. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we will be getting the VODs up on YouTube eventually, and look forward to future streams in the future. That was redundant. I'm terrible at it, uh, introducing the stream and finishing it, so I'm just going to wish you all a fantastic rest of your weekend. God bless everybody. Hope to see you next time.